Hello everyone, this is Justin Cross. Um, as you all know, I've got a video that is called the Zozo Demon we uh, video, also known as the Ouija Board Demon. This is how most people find my channel. I guess it's a good thing I have that one up. Well, within that uh, video, I received a video response. And this was actually about, I'll say, ten days ago. By a woman named... Ouija board obsession. Ouija board obsession turns out to be a woman. A woman that has been playing with the Ouija board and tarot cards and things such as that nature for the last 15 years now. Or, I'm sorry, 19. 19 years of specializing in this form of witchcraft. Well, here are some... Um, clips of that video she sent me. Okay, this is a me um, video response to Kill the Fear. Um, well, I discovered your videos um, <laughs> um, earlier today, or well, earlier yesterday is around 1 o'clock a.m. and um, I, find, I found your videos very humorous, I guess, when you talk about the Ouija board, Zozo, Demonic, in today okay well I've been using the Ouija board like more than 19 years like since I was 10 you know <laughs> when you said the Ouija board is basically the Ouija board was made to contact demonic spirits no matter what people say I mean yet yeah, that is true but it was also made for finding missing people finding objects etc etc after she sent me that video I responded and told her that I would like to interview her for her and I to have an online debate on Skype. During this time, within the next couple days actually, she had disappeared after she agreed to do the interview with me. I was curious what happened, and then she had resurfaced just yesterday. Yesterday when she resurfaced, I had seen that every video on her YouTube channel had been deleted when she had almost 4,000 subscribers. Well, when I went on her channel, I saw that everything on her channel seemed to be Christian with only one video. That video is this one. Hey you guys, what's going on? Well, um, if you guys are wondering what happened to my channel and my videos, basically God spoke to me. He told me everything that I was doing was, you know, completely wrong. I was just using my gifts that he has given to me and wanted me to work with him and had things for me to do, you know. And it's a long story. If you guys want to hear about it, just leave me a comment letting me know to make another video of it. But I want to say, you guys, that I am so sorry for, you know, if you thought I was misleading you. Um, or anything like that. That wasn't my intention. I was basically finding, you know, finding my purpose in life, which I've always known I was supposed to help people with my gifts from what God told me years ago. And if he didn't say anything that specific day or per anything, period, I would have died yesterday and gone to hell. So basically, I would advise everybody not to use the Ouija board, not to use any tools or anything like that. If you guys want to hear the experiences that I've had with God, I would love to share it with you guys. Just let me know if you will love the comments and I'm sorry. <laughs> just let me know if you will love another video and just leave a comment below. Okay, I am so sorry. I apologize apologize you guys. Forgive me and do not use anything of that sort. Bye. Now as you can see she had changed her mind drastically, and we hadn't even had a chance to debate yet. But after I saw this miraculous change, I knew I still had to interview her and find out what happened and why she would change her mind so drastically. Obviously, she no longer believed in the Ouija board like she did before, which means that our debate was completely just destroyed and the interview wouldn't make any sense. But I knew it was an interesting story. So I went ahead and I set up my camera today, and I got this interview for her to share her story, not just 
with you, all of my five subscribers. <laughs> but for her, practically 4,000 subscribers. And I won't give her real name, because I don't know if she wants it out. But this is Ouija Board Obsession Story on why she got involved in this type of witchcraft and what happened for her to change her mind. I hope you enjoy. You contacted me with the Zozo Demon video. And, um... I'm going to show a clip of that, actually, real quick. It's how you use it. And Janice say, yeah, right, whatever, I don't care what you say. But just hear me out. It's how you use it. It's like someone gives you an, like, a, like say a genie, hypothetically, gives you, you know, well, you find a genie lamp and you rub it. And the genie comes out and says, oh, I can grant you three wishes. What do you choose to use with them? You know, you can use it for good or for bad. It's all about opening your abilities up. He understands and um, it's funny because honestly I would tell you that I don't really believe in Zozo I have never came across Zozo um, I think it's something <laughs> that you know people made up and they spread it around and now they created this whole demonic entity within themselves you understand so they use a board to contact these demonic entities Alright, so right there, that's pretty interesting. Obviously, we have opposing views, but since then, I suppose things have changed already. And, uh, go ahead and just share with me what happened. Well, like, it, this, it all started when I started fasting, you know? And when I started fasting, I started to basically hear God speak to me, you know? I've always been able to hear God, but this is. Uh, that was the time I actually listened to God, you know, and what he had to say. And he said, like, the things that I was doing was basically medium chip, Ouija boards, tarot cards were basically, you know, very bad. That's not, um, that he said that I was basically abusing my gifts that he had given to me. You understand? So he, um, told me to throw everything away, and, um, and I did. And, cover myself as you see I'm covered and and to basically work for him he basically has tasks for me to do and I have to abide by those you know tasks and do what he wants me to do or needs me to do and ask no questions so okay so he threw everything away everything such as my Ouija boards, tarot cards, everything. I had to stop doing readings and all that, you know, because they were, I was misusing them. The way I was using them, like using them, you know, as, you know, basically charging and stuff like that. That's not what he wanted me to do with my, the gifts that he has given to me, you know? So, yeah. Now that must have been difficult for you. Because you've been doing that for how long? Oh, a long time, a long time. I basically professionally started doing it with like, what, three years? But basically I've been doing it for around like 19 to 20 years, somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. How many followers or uh, subscribers do you have on YouTube? Does it matter? <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, really? Um, I don't know, like 3,000 or something? I don't really... You have, yeah, over 3,000. You have quite a bit. And uh, was this difficult for you at all as far as when you think as far as uh, losing your subscribers? Or uh, what's, what's gone through your mind as far as what do you think other people are going to think of your decision? I don't know. I mean, I don't really... That's a good question, too. Honestly, it is a really good question. Um, I really didn't think much of anything like that. You understand what people would think of me. Basically, you know, when I heard God speak to me and tell me what I had to do, it's like a sense of your soul. Like, you know, it's like how I describe God as being a, uh, a long, 
lost father you know someone you just found out a father that you found out about and you called him or he contacted you and you heard his voice and you're like I feel a connection with this person this is a person that I have to obey you know even though when he tells me to do something I have to it's my soul natural and uh, my soul's natural reaction to it you understand so I don't really think anything I did what I was supposed to do you know um, about losing my subscribers honestly um, I love my subscribers I um, um, I had gained so much you know friendship for through my many subscribers and everything so you know I really don't care what people think of me I never really did <laughs> you know so I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing I'm all this time I thought I was doing you know uh, God's work when I was doing the illusion that the devil was showing me basically so yeah you said it was an illusion pretty much can you elaborate on that what do you mean by that well you know how you know they say that you know um, Satan's gonna show you what you want that what he what you want to see basically you know he can you know betray to be Jesus you know disguise himself to be Jesus or any other demon can basically do that and give you that illusion of okay what you're doing you have to do this you have to do this you know basically that's what he did for me you understand and I actually believe that you know all this time until God basically you know spoke to me when I was fasting and started to tell me what I was doing was wrong and the reason I would believe this spirit is because he, his voice is from the heavens. It's not from around me. Because the voices around me were demons. You understand? Because the devil is on earth. So, of course, naturally, he will speak to you as of, like he's right here. You understand? Beside you. You understand? And God is, he is in heaven. And it's a heavenly God. Of course, he would talk to you from in heaven. So, that's what he does. You know? So, that's how I realized, okay, wow, okay. That's God, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah. So the illusion that Satan showed me, and you know, basically, I kind of bought into that was of him telling me to do this and do that, and what I'm doing is right and stuff like that. And I would get like this demon. I well, I well, she called herself Evelyn. You know, on a, um, she befriended me. Basically, came to my house. She was like a demon, like I said. Came to my house and was offering me a deal you know and then I had made a YouTube video about it you know and people wanted to know more about this Evelyn Levante you understand so later on I found out she was a demon even though the angels told me um, that she was a demon you know I didn't believe it because she seemed very nice at a time you understand she was being um, she wanted to, do, to be my friend and was telling me all these stuff and then she started going into making the deal selling my soul um, to gain riches and all that stuff like that and you know it, it was tempting but I just basically know better <laughs> you know very tempting when you say she was a demon what do you mean by that are you saying this was a person who had demons this is a person that was dark this person was a demon possessed or this was a literal demon a literal entity basically something from hell you know a demon from hell basically it, you know I told I would tell people about it they would say this is basically that's the devil you know because Evelyn Levante was just a, she appeared to be a beautiful person you know beautiful entity basically a spirit whatever you want to call it you know she appeared to to be that way she was just flawless and perfect you understand and the devil can see people that way and when she started to show her true colors she started to appear to me all like ugly you understand and that's how I found out you know so when was the last time you've spoken with this entity oh I don't know I don't remember it was like the, the beginning of the year I think or the end of last year somewhere on there because I made a YouTube video about it and then suddenly something happened where I I kind of rebuked at her and I told her to leave and I've never really seen her again you know when you saw this entity um does it look like a regular person like you and I? Or do you see through them? Is there anything that floats around them? What is it? I mean, yeah, it's fascinating because 
I didn't see right through her. She looked like as if she was a person, a real person. But I knew what she was because, like, when I first saw her ever in my life, I was basically, it was 3 o'clock in the morning, maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I was flipping through my TV uh, channels and stuff like that. And then I saw someone through my peripheral vision, like, sitting on, you know, the dining room chair in my dining room area. And um, I looked, and I thought, you know, when you see something through your peripherals, you think, you know, when you turn to it, it's going to go away. But, no, she sat there. And she was a redhead, you know, old-fashioned, like, hairstyle. She's redhead. She was very pale. Um, very beautiful, beautiful, flawless woman. You understand? Um, I didn't see through her. I knew what she was. I mean, I thought at the time she was a spirit, you know. But as soon as um, she started telling me stuff, I, you know, asked the angels about it, and basically, um, they said she was bad, and then I rebuked her, and then she had came back. But, um, she was telling me that she's like a vampire, half vampire, half werewolf, and all that stuff, you know? Basically, you know, things you would hear in a movie, you understand? Mm -hmm. So, basically, she seemed like a real person. This is not someone I can see. She touched me, and I can basically feel it. She looked like she was physically here. You know, but she was, you know, she left. So when she left, she just disappeared. Vanished. <laughs> so what was on the dealing table? What, what was the deal that this entity gave you? I mean, exactly. What, do, do you remember exactly what it was? Okay, well, okay. I was taking a shower, right? And she appeared, because when I met her in, in my living room, basically... You know, she was talking to me. She had this accent. She, oh, she was just basically, you know, you w couldn't stop looking at her. You know, you understand? Because her, her appearance was an illusion. You was just basically breathtaking. You have never seen anybody like that, you know? So, so I went, you know, I was basically talking to her for a couple of minutes. And then I went to take a shower. And then I got, came off the shower. And then she was in the bathroom. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I looked at myself in the mirror. And basically, I've, I saw her like right there behind me she you know the reflection of her right there behind me so basically she's like well I can make you famous I can you know um, other, she says other things to you I can make you famous I you can get a lot of money if you just you know make this deal with me you understand so yeah she wanted me to you know give her you know my soul but she says first if you don't believe she's like if you do not believe that I'm here she will have that little accent you know and very really nice uh, sounding accent and she's like if you don't believe that I'm here if you don't believe that I'm real I will tell you this something's gonna happen and when this happens you know you would know that I'm real you understand and she said something about my husband he's gonna do something and he did exactly that you understand exactly that and I was basically surprised that I don't want to go into detail what he did but <laughs> he, he did it exactly how she you know explained it that he would do it so I mean that's how I know she was real and crazy <laughs> okay. <laughs> and why didn't you take the deal because, <laughs> because you don't make a deal with you don't, you have to understand because you never know. If you take a deal, you never know where you're going to die. You can die tomorrow. You can die in a couple hours after you take the deal. You just never know where you're going to die. You know, I'm not going to spend my life in hell. You know, my, my heart is pure with God, has always been pure with God. But my mind and actions have never been, you know, pure to God. But my heart always been pure. I'm not dumb. <laughs> but it's tempting. I tell you that it's tempting. That's the devil's work. When you get tempted, you know that's the devil's work. And God doesn't make deals with anybody. You know, only the devil does. Now, you mentioned that when you spoke to this entity before, what was the entity's name again? Evelyn Levante. Pretty name. Oh, I know. And it's, yeah, it's a very pretty name. And we tried looking her up and everything. I forgot when she was born. She said she was born in the 13 or 1400s or something like that. But she was just you know, told me a lot of stuff, and it was just unbelievable, you know, that you would think it's from a movie. That's why I didn't believe her much. You know, I just listened to her. So, the angels, you mentioned that these angels warned you about Evelyn. 
And you did not believe them. Well, well, at that okay, at that time I listened to them because I'm like, well, is Evelyn real? You know, she is she a good spirit? I said. They said no, she's a bad spirit. And so I sent her away, and then she came back. You know, in a couple of weeks or days, I don't remember um, when she came back, but she had came back, and then she had left. And she wanted to make, I mean, when she came back, she wanted to make a deal, and then I said no, and then she had left, and then when I moved to my new place, she had came back, you know, and I was like, okay, and then I, that's when I started making YouTube videos on Ouija boards, and as soon as I started making YouTube videos and stuff like that, Evelyn came back, and I started talking about Evelyn in my videos, and so that's how I uh, came to realize that she was a devil or just a demon, you know, so... Do you still talk to these angels? The, no. I only talk to God. I don't talk to any angels. I mean, unless God wants me to, but no, I don't really talk to any angels anymore like I used to. Do you still believe those were angels? Yeah, I mean, of course. Like, well, messengers from, um, messengers of God, basically. I do believe that. If they said no, don't do it, that's, that those are they work for God. They're, those are angels from God. Can you elaborate more on them, what your experiences with those angels? Like, what do you mean? Like, doing, like, what if they, what else? What do you do, do, you do, do with them? them? Do you ever talk to them? Well, I've always worked with them. Well, them. Well, I, like. Okay, well, I always worked with angels, okay? I never, uh, I only saw Archangel Michael. I've only seen that angel. And angels did appear to me when I was very young, about the age of five, but they didn't have wings. They, they called themselves uh, my protectors. They would ask me, how was I doing? Was I happy? You know, very nice, you know, um, spirits. But at that time, I thought there were people, you know, like the, you know, shower protective services would, you know, come into your house and ask you tons of questions. That's how I thought they were, like just people coming into my house to ask you questions. But then as soon as they disappeared, it really didn't click in my head until like later, later on when I started experiencing, you know, more of, you know, paranormal experiences. Um, so I did have, when I got older, I started talking to angels because honestly the angels were with me and telling me not to commit suicide because once I started hearing these demons talk to me, I wanted to commit suicide at a young age and so many times and if it wasn't for the angels, talking me through um, not killing myself, I wouldn't be here, you know, so. Okay. Now, back to the Ouija board, originally what we were on. When you had made that video, in response to my video, um, if I had told you everything you just told me, which is what I was going to tell you, <laughs> what would you have thought of me? I mean, what, if I had been telling you it was an illusion and, um, you know, it's just the devil's got uh, a, what do you call it? Not a fantasy. It, it just, well, like you said, uh, you, pretty much a screen over your eyes showing you a different world that he wants you to see what would you have said to me if you would have told me that <laughs> if i was still in that state of i would say no i would say i wouldn't agree with you you know i would say yeah right because i know the truth you know i what i'm doing is good you know um i know when there's demons coming in and wanting to work with me and wanting to mess with me and taunt me and everything yeah you know i understand that i do rebuke it but it's how you use the board that that that's what matters you understand but that's how i would just reply back to you <laughs> and uh now that you believe that because to me it's so interesting that you're coming back to me telling me this stuff that i was prepared to tell you in the debate and now there's nothing for me to debate, debate, debate yeah. with you. <laughs> it, it, it was going to be so fun. fun. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I know back because with me and you, it could have gone on and on, you know. <laughs> well, we would have went on forever, and we would have had a great friendship actually from it. <laughs> oh, I think. But our friendship is going to be better now. <laughs> well, praise the <Wow>. Lord. <laughs> now, let's go back to your. Do you mind if I start asking you questions as far as why you even got involved? And this stuff, as far as the Ouija board. Okay, you can ask me a question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So why? Why? Oh, <laughs> why? Um, well, be okay. I was gonna write a book about this, to be honest. Like how I came up um, to realize I had I was gifted, you know, and all that. But I would tell you that you know I asked God at the age of eleven. So yeah, eleven that. You know, when a child's supposed to be playing and just having fun, I was basically felt like an outsider. Not, you know, because of, you know, people influence making, you know, being a bad influence on me, basically. But um, I always felt like I shouldn't be here. You understand? Like, I was looking, you know, outside. You know, I was on the outside looking in, basically, and wondering why is this world so cruel? And why am I here? And I asked God, I'm like, why am I here? Because I did believe in God. But when I got older, I didn't believe in God. But every time I prayed, God always answered my prayers. He's always been there no matter what, you know. So he's always there for people. I asked him, why am I here? What's my life purpose? What am I supposed to do? Because I don't know. Why am I here? And he and, um, basically sent me an angel and um, said you're supposed to help people with your gifts so I'm like okay when then that angel just left and I asked God to confirm it if this is true basically confirm it for me and then the angel came back again the next day and told me the same thing and so I'm, you know I was wondering how all through my life I was wondering how do I use it what are my gifts you know so I came to people were telling me that I was a medium and I can, you know, contact, you know, the the seats, basically, you know. And I didn't believe that until I started actually doing that. I started getting spirits again, just basically, you know, taunting me. So, because, you know, when I was that, that young of an age, I didn't want to believe what I was hearing. I thought it was natural to, you know, and normal for me to hear that, you know. And um, I didn't believe people were telling me that, you know, until I started actually practicing, you know, um you know, the Ouija board and tarot cards and giving readings and stuff like that, you know, and sometimes it would come naturally. I would be telling people, well, you know, I think you should do this because that's what I feel. I'm getting that. That's what I'm getting. This is going to happen to you or, you know, stuff like that. So basically, I started using the Ouija board and tarot cards because I thought that's what God wanted me to do, you know, because he wasn't being specific because I didn't ask, you know, I didn't go back to ask him, what do you mean? What are my gifts? What am I supposed to do with them? You know, I was I didn't bother to ask him, which I should have, you know, but um, that's how I continue to, uh, you know, use the board and use tarot cards. And I was basically trying to figure out what 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 was it that God wants me to do with my gifts, you know, and how do I help people from it? And so when I came to realize I can help people by giving them readings and contacting them with their loved ones, then, you know and get something out of it, which is money, you know, so I'm helping people and getting money at the same time, you understand, so it works both ways, so that's the part that God didn't like as well, so I must, I must say that, <laughs> you know, so that's how I came to, you know, using the board and tarot cards and other things. You said that you see an angel, not an angel, but you mentioned Michael, yeah. The Archangel. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta share, that share that with me. Oh, I don't know. It was just for like a couple of seconds, you know. I don't know. I was always, you know, calling Archangel Michael, come, come, give me a sign. You know, Archangel Michael would give me a sign because when I'll be outside, you know, where, you know, it was sunny and there was no winds, I would say, Michael, just give me a sign and he would just blow the wind, you know, make the wind blow and it's like, make the trees blow and everything it was just it was so fun playing like that and one night basically when I was um, just chilling down laying down my bed not even tired you know um, I closed my eyes and I saw Archangel Michael I just knew it was Archangel Michael you understand it could have been any other angel but somehow I just knew you, you just know 
You know, understand when you see an angel, you just know if they're an angel. You know that they're a deceased loved one. You just know, basically. And Archangel Michael is was a, basically a huge angel. You know, and he had like a uh, his aura was like a gold gold aura outlining him. He had yeah. huge wings, like very huge wings, and he had long hair. He basically, to me, he looked like Jesus a bit. You know, like the way Jesus would look. You understand? That's how he looked mm -hmm. to me. He looked very handsome. <laughs> very handsome. And he started he started like, you know, hovering. And I was like, what? That, that was just, just amazing experience to me because um, that was one beautiful angel. Wow. Yeah, yeah so it, it was more like, you know, something that I've seen for like, split like, what, three seconds and that was it. But it seemed longer, you know, as I saw him. But it was wow! It was an amazing experience. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and take a break from this because this is where this section of the interview, this part, came to an end. She and I agreed that we were going to continue the next day, in order just to take a breather and let you all process what you just heard. I hope that you enjoy this, and I hope you enjoy part two, because quite honestly. I don't even know what I'm going to ask her yet for part two, but I know what is going to be tomorrow. And I do hope that you have enjoyed what you've seen so far. And please remember, this person was very deep into the Ouija board beliefs and spirituality. And for such a drastic change to happen, doesn't it kind of make you wonder what's true and what isn't? If you're playing with the Ouija board or terror, terror cards, I think is what they're called ask yourself if that is really the reality or if it's the reality that other things are making you see this has been Justin Cross for part one of the Ouija board obsession interview you all be blessed thank you for watching